Welcome back. This time we're talking about Kubo and the Two Strings, the fourth film from Studio Laika, whose previous works include Coraline, Paranorman, and The Box Trolls. Now, Studio Laika is pretty much the only domestic studio still working in stop-motion animation. And frankly, if the medium was going to have a standard bearer, I can't think of a better studio than Laika, because their films have been really, really good from starting with Coraline all the way through Box Trolls. And one of the common links has been strong, compelling storytelling and beautiful stop-motion animation, both of which you can find in Kubo and the Two Strings. Now this film is set in ancient Japan and is told as if it is a legend of old. I believe it's actually based on an original story from the screenwriters, but the film does capture that mythology feel and that seeps into the characters and the events of the story. And it focuses on a young boy named Kubo, voiced by Art Parkinson, um, probably best known as Rickon on Game of Thrones. And Kubo has this magical ability to play this instrument and control paper. And he uses this ability to tell stories to the villagers living near this cave that him and his mother are living in. And they're, and they're there because they're in hiding from the Moon King. And of course, he's found because otherwise there wouldn't be a movie. And the king sends his daughters, um, called the Sisters, voiced by Rooney Mara. Kubo is forced to go on his own quest, like the stories he tells the villagers, in which he has to go claim, reclaim this um, mystical armor that will protect him from the Moon King and, it, and his um, minions. And along the way he meets um, a monkey voiced by Charlize Theron and a beetle warrior voiced by Matthew McConaughey in his first ever voice work. And I have to say, like Laika's previous works, I really, really enjoyed Kubo and the Two Strings. It's a beautiful film, first of all. The stop motion animation is wonderful. Pretty much everything about this movie is just simply beautiful. Um, from the character designs, to the clothing, to the sets, um, and then there's so much involving paper because that's Kubo's ability and how that works into the stop motion is, is just amazing. What they're able to accomplish in this movie is just unbelievable. But aside from the visuals, the storytelling is actually very strong as well. I say that with one major caveat. Um, there is a story archetype that I'm not a fan of. I've never been a fan of and that's what I call the scavenger hunt. And that's where our heroes have to go collect a certain number of items so they can face um, the big bad guy at the end. Um, and typically they don't really work that well for me. And the major problem with those films is the amount of time they have to tell their story. You need so much time at the beginning to set up the characters and the, and the quest. And then you need so much time at the end to have the final confrontation, you have the big battle, and you have some kind of denouement at the end. Which does not leave a lot of time in the middle to have your quest. There's only so much time to have the little mini-adventure to capture each item and then have a transition where it actually still feels like a quest and not just a series of vignettes um, building up to the end. Um, here in Kubo, basically there's this charm that comes in and it basically points the way to wherever they need to go and they just keep following that and they happen upon whatever they need. So the actual hunt is probably the weakest part of the story. Unfortunately for this film, it really doesn't matter. Um, because the actual hunt for these items, the hunt itself, is probably the least important part of this story and what you're going to get out of it in the end. What's much more important is the characters and the emotional journey that Kubo and his companions are going on as they learn more things about themselves and about the, um, the reason for this quest. And it's that emotional journey that ties this whole film together and really sets it apart from a lot of other children films. There really is a lot of nuanced, well thought out storytelling in this movie um, built around this framework of the scavenger hunt. And that's what makes this film so fun, so enjoyable. And that's what I'm going to remember about this movie along with some really good um, performances from the voice cast, um, specifically um, Art Parkinson, Charlie Theron, and Matthew McConaughey. They're able to inhabit these characters, give them so much depth that you feel for them when things go wrong. 
as well as provide some really solid comic relief. And this is a movie that really does actually need that comic relief um, because there are some really heavy things that are happening in this movie. So yeah, I highly recommend Kubo and the Two Strings. Um, wonderful voice cast, very surprisingly deep and thoughtful storytelling, and just downright beautiful animation. So if you have seen Kubo and the Two Strings, let me know what you thought. Um, and what's your favorite Leica film? Um, any of the four, I would like to know. As always, you can subscribe to my channel, check out some of my other reviews, and until next time, I'll see you at the movies.